Hey guys, Vinny Hart here from CreationArmy.com and Creationist Company. Today we've got a special treat for you. Recently, Joe and I got to interview Eric Hoven, the president of Creation Day and host of the Creation Day show, for this month's episode of the Creation Army Now podcast. Eric Hoven was a really fun guy to talk to, and the interview turned out really well. Unfortunately, however, my new Skype call recorder plugin only got the last half of the interview, so we were out of luck. But Eric was super awesome about it and agreed to come back onto the podcast, so Joe and I once again got to have a conversation with him which was really cool. So anyway, I think you guys are really going to enjoy this interview we did with him. So now, without further ado, I'm just going to shut my stupid mouth and move on to the interview we had as heard on the Crazy Story Now podcast. First, guys, thanks for letting me hang out with you today. I appreciate it. My name is Eric Hovind. I've been uh, traveling and speaking on creation versus evolution uh, for 17 years now. I love presenting the truth of science and scripture together, showing how we can merge God's world and God's word and how they dovetail beautifully together. I, I get the privilege of leading a ministry called Creation Today where we help uh, equip people with the truth and the facts that they need to defend their faith in the God of the Bible. And for those that are not convinced of the truth of Scripture or the truth of God, we help provide resources to, to take them on the journey wherever they're at and bring them to fully, fo fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ. So that's what we get the privilege of doing around here. Fantastic. Yeah, cool. You know, I, I've always been a big fan of Creation Day because, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, Answers to Genesis is obviously, they're big and they do a lot of mm -hmm. really good quality things, but I kind of consider, you might call Creation Day, they're kind of like the Grand Theft Auto of uh, Creation Ministries. I don't like Grand Theft Auto. I am an anti-Grand Theft Auto person, but it's just yeah. everything Creation mm -hmm. Day does, it's really just goes overkill making it super high quality and mm -hmm. yeah. they're not afraid to cover controversial topics even within the creation science field yeah, so, so that's cool. but also uh -huh. you get a lot of opposition from atheists don't you we do i, I think all the atheists love us <laughs> secretly down deep they say all those flowery words to cover up their deep dying love for our ministry because we get to interact with them on a regular basis yeah which is yeah, really cool funny. and which you which yeah. you think is worse to be on facebook Twitter or an atheist monument. Ooh, <laughs> I got to tell you, I love being up on top of atheist monuments because they listen. Uh, Twitter and Facebook, they did, they don't, <laughs> they just want to respond, and so well, at least they listen on an atheist monument for a good twenty seconds. <laughs> They're done listening. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. yeah, I mean, for an atheist, I mean, yeah. like, uh -huh. I think that like on a comment, I don't, I don't know if they read them. Yeah. So, um. We've got some of Creation Day's DVDs and you that them we again. got, and I forgot them again this time. <laughs> um, but anyway, one of them is Beginnings, mm -hmm. which was a big help with the Vincent's yeah. Pokemon uh -huh. episode, along with a, a speech I heard from Ken Ham a while ago. Those DVDs. So, and also that we got God's Glory, which I found really inspiring. But starting with Beginnings, I'm just kind of curious, where and when was Beginnings filmed? We filmed Beginnings uh, back in 2011, uh, or 2012, I guess. And the goal of that was to create kind of a small group introductory course for people to understand the very beginning, the very basics of creation versus evolution. So we start off going into the two different world, uh, the, the fact that they're both religions. Creation and evolution are religious worldviews. One doesn't have all the science, and the other, uh, so it really is showing the evolutionists have a worldview, a religious system. Then we go into how old is it, exactly how old is the earth, and how can we tell what's the science behind it. And there's science that shows the earth is old, and there's also science that shows the earth is young. So which ones do we need to worry about? We unpackage in that session. Then I love going into dinosaurs because it's just a huge topic that people wonder about. How do creationists account for dinosaurs? What's going on with this? So I love hitting dinosaurs. Fact versus faith is one of my favorites because I'm literally ripping pages out of a textbook showing that, look, if you don't have – what's in these textbooks isn't really – Fact, it's a faith-based statement. They're not saying something is factually true. They're spouting off an opinion. They're sharing their faith, and they're trying to sell it as science in the textbook. So fact versus faith is a fun one for me. Uh, and then uh, we end with the truth going into who God really is. And that's kind of a launch into my God's glory message of my personal testimony. So I love beginnings because it sets the foundation, sets the stage for people to understand the truth of creation versus evolution. Yeah, one thing I really, really, really like about Beginnings was that the science in it was 
simple enough for me to understand. And that's saying mm-hmm. a lot, you know? Yeah, but I mean, even people like me <laughs> yeah. can get I mean, something kids, new from like, it. Like, you know, even our little siblings, they like to watch mm-hmm. it, you know? I mean, it's it's huge age, you know, span yeah. who are interested in it. So it's perfect yeah. for Which I actually, I actually gave the, because uh, uh, so, we had yeah. gotten a copy of them, because by the way, it says in it that it's okay if you copy it, but I don't sell it. Uh, but uh, I gave that copy to uh, the, our youth group leader, and yeah. just, I'm, I'm kind of hoping that she'll show yeah. some of the teens there, because I cool. really... Yeah think that uh, they find it interesting but uh, also I've mentioned that I find your testimony in God's glory really interesting and inspiring so you, could you tell us a little bit about what that thing's all about yeah I produced this DVD God's glory because of all the people that I was running into that had grown up very similar to me they'd grown up in a Christian home I uh, but really more than having a relationship with God they became a product of the Christian home environment and that ended up, I guess, tragically being my story, where I have no excuse. I was raised in a great Christian home, uh, lots of great teaching, lots of great preaching, lots of great examples in front of me. But instead of allowing that to become what my heart, uh, uh, cha- instead of allowing that to change my heart, it was simply head knowledge. And it hadn't really become heart knowledge. Uh, and my journey of, of actually watching a, a DVD called Hell's Best Kept Secret and realizing that my sin was not against my brother or my sister or my mom or dad or my principal or my youth pastor or my teachers in school. My, my sin was against God and God alone, just like David, when he sinned with Bathsheba and was confronted. He said, God, against you and you alone have I sinned. And I realized at that moment in time, wow, God, my sin is before you. You don't get into heaven on the coattails of your parents' Christianity or spirituality. You must have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And it's that relationship that you've got to, got to personally get, personally experience that is so important. You know, what is, what is truth? What, what, is, what is experiencing life if at the end of it we haven't experienced the very basic truth that Jesus Christ is Lord and he wants to get all the glory by becoming the Savior of our soul? Absolutely. Cool. And yeah. I like how, you know, like you said, you know, we, we don't want to just get people into church and, you know, doing the motions because we, we, we want to yeah. get them to kind of like homeschooled nerd. I've started to change the way I deal with comments just because, I mean, you know, you might say, okay, this guy, he says he's, a, you know, he talks like a creationist mm-hmm. and arguing with all these evolutionists, yeah. but just the, like this one guy, he just, He's really obnoxious, almost yeah. as obnoxious as an atheist in defending creation. And mm-hmm. I look at that, I'm just like, that's not, uh, you know, that's yeah. not what Christianity is all about. So I've changed my policy to where it's mm-hmm. like, I want people to be respectful. I don't want people to, you know, use their words. Yeah. But I do want to give them a voice because yes. that's what homeschool is all about is getting mm-hmm. people to think. Yeah. And if somebody's got an argument, I'm not going to silence them provided they be respectful of yeah. our beliefs. Yeah. Let's so, use bad words in this case. No yeah, more comments. That's disrespectful. It gets deleted. Uh, but anyway, I remember the first time I ran into Creation Day. Let me think a minute. Um, I believe the first one episode of it, Creation Day that I saw was an interview that you guys did with Ken Ham. And then I saw on iTunes that right after that, you had done an interview with David Reeves, who I've been friends with Facebook for a long time, ever since I got into Creation Astronomy, starting the Creation Astronomy Now podcast and yeah. everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was kind of like, well, I've heard of that guy. Where have I heard of him before? Because we didn't really know him that much then. Mm-hmm. And so that was cool. That was one of the things that uh, kind of got me more yeah. connected to him and we ended up getting him on the podcast and things like that. Yeah. But anyway, recently, a few weeks ago, the fourth season of the Creation Day show launched, which I remember what? all summer long. I was just waiting oh. for the Creation Day show. It's finally and here. I'm so stoked that it's finally here. This is going to be oh, so cool. Yeah. Um, so this well, this season is called, of course called Battleship Project. So could you tell us a little bit about what the show is all about? Yeah, I love the creation of today's show. It gives us a medium to translate this information on on creation, evolution, apologetics, defending the truth of Christianity. It gives us a medium to put that out on the airways on on uh, on show on on television channels that are even not even here in the United States. I mean, we broadcast all over the world, so. It's an exciting opportunity, and this season we did Battleship Apologetics using the acronym of SHIP, S-H-I-P, which stands for Science, History, Individual Experience, and Philosophy. So Battleship Apologetics is about bringing 
uh, and apologetic, but looking through science, looking through history, looking at our individual experiences, and looking at philosophy to really answer these questions the skeptics have about the Bible or about God or about our faith in him. So uh, I've got an incredible co-host, Marianne Pike, does a fantastic job of helping us understand uh, these truths. So she and I together uh, co-hosted this last season, or th this season, the uh, season four of the Creation Today show, and I, I couldn't be more excited about the content that we're covering this, uh, this, this next week. The episode um, has got a great science experiment in it. I'm doing science experiments with my friend Ben Shetler from Ask or Think Ministries. So it just provides a, a lot of information, but I think in an entertaining and educational way to keep people's attention. So that's what I love about yeah. the Christian Today Show. Yeah, cool. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm just, yeah, I'm excited about it, but I'm just a little teeny bit disappointed that the new co-host is a girl. Chili. Oh, But don't go to twitter.com slash Marianne underscore Pike and tell her that I said that. She, she'd probably be annoyed. You shouldn't do it. Is it just because it's a girl? Is that why? <laughs> Uh, uh, I don't know. I, I'm relationship uh, problems. Uh, <laughs> I just came out. Okay. Okay. I, I personally, I personally, I'm just, I personally I'm just, think she actually did a really good job, though. Yeah, and she's yeah, actually she from the uh, what was that Creation Explorers DVD series? Yep. On that, yeah. So well, right. I, maybe I need to check that out sometime. Yeah. I haven't gotten a chance to. I, I've heard about it for a while, but mm -hmm. you know, when you hear about those new things, and yeah, it takes you. It takes a while before you. Really you, you, gotta, you, got, you gotta. You got. You hear about them on the Creation Today show before you. Yeah. You think uh, they're. Uh, <laughs> maybe I should check that out. Uh, but yeah, and there's also uh, the science experiments are one yeah. of my personal favorite things oh, yeah. about mm -hmm. the Creation Day show because it's just. Just really cool hands-on mm -hmm. experiments, yeah. and we've even done the one with fire, and we're going to be doing that along with some others that were on the Creation Day show. When we go to South Dakota, doing a VBS for some of the Native American kids yeah. in the reservations that are there. Um, you'll love, you'll love the I, I discovered doing that but, one where you held the fire in your hand that you want to keep the hand away from your face when the bubbles are lit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. You do. Wanna... <laughs> That's why I think, didn't we say don't try this at home? I think <laughs> don't try this one at home. We're, we're, we're parkour athletes. We break the rules. You guys do break the rules, yeah. <laughs> Those are fun, and they're a great way to engage, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, engage people to show them both science and make a scriptural application. Right. So Ben uh, is really good at that, and I love it. We're actually... Yeah putting all the science experiments we've done onto a DVD just to make those available because a lot of people really do like those. So not yeah. sure the title yet. We're working on that, but something about merging science and scripture and unforgettable experience. So uh, I see it in the background. You've got your uh, Genesis 3D movie tra uh, poster up there. And yeah. We, and we watched <laughs> one. <laughs> well, we watched <laughs> one. <laughs> like that. You guys, you guys need a poster for the background right there for you guys. Yeah, well, what do we got? We got a drum set. We got a, you can see a piano over there. I don't know if anybody can see <laughs> it, that. It needs a poster. It needs yeah. a poster. I've got, I've got a few posters in my office where I do the... Uh, the the homeschool nerd videos, but I've got like a Mario poster and a Jesse LaFlair poster, but I, I, my wall's kind of full right now. I'm not sure <laughs> yeah, I've got room for that big of a poster. You need a Jesse. Take down the Mario poster and take up the Genesis 3D. Because uh, Joe's got a Zelda poster yeah, behind I got, his desk. I, I got a one. <laughs> but you got you got room for a Genesis 3D movie yeah. project. But ever since I heard about the just Genesis 3D movie window. project, ever since I saw some of the footage from yeah. it, I was just my mind was blown. It's like, yeah, yeah, we just looked at it. We're like, yeah, this, this right here, this is gonna be good. Yeah, because I just, as you guys should know, if you've been listening to my stuff for a while, I am a big fan of three mm. graphics and everything because I've kind of been into it a little bit, being a Blender yeah. artist myself. Um, so could you tell us a little bit about how the Genesis 3D Movie Project came about? Yeah, it's a really neat story. I was down in Orlando speaking, and a guy came up after a Sunday night service and said, "Hey, I love your material. This stuff is awesome." You got to meet a friend of mine. He's a Christian and he does animation. And I went, Christian animation. It's going to be terrible. No thanks. I'm not interested. I don't want to see his stuff. He said, No, I'm telling you, he does great work. You got to meet with him. I said, Listen, I leave town tomorrow morning, Monday morning. I got to head out to drive back to Pensacola. But I got time for breakfast. If you guys want to meet me, I'll meet you on Monday morning for breakfast. So we got together on Monday morning for breakfast, and it was just a God thing. God saying, let's start something with this guy. His name is Ralph Strain. And I remember pitching an idea to him. I said, well, I don't know if you could do this, but I've always had an idea of doing a little, like a little one-minute uh, segment where I'm teaching something about creation for just a minute. 
but the visual effects around me are really doing the teaching mm -hmm. for me. He said, yes, that's what I'm talking about. I love it. I said, I, I was going to call it Creation Minute, and I've already got the URL, creationminute.com. He said, let's do that. I was like, what am I getting into? So I said, all right, we contracted to do five of these Creation Minutes. I went back down a couple months later. I was speaking in Orlando again at another church. And I go down, and after speaking at the church, I go to this guy's uh, studio where we're going to film. And we go to a green screen area that he had actually built in his aunt's garage. So we go to his aunt's garage, uh, actually shed. It's like an off the house. And I'm going, okay, are you for real? Can you produce anything? I'm still worried about Christian and animation. I think it's going to go together, okay? <laughs> We film, we make up the creation minutes on the spot. We, we film them, and I'm going, how is this going to do anything? I, I can't imagine what this guy's going to do. He sends me about a, about a month later. He goes, hey, here's the first draft. And he sent me creation minute number one. And if you've ever seen creation minute number one, you'll go, that mm -hmm. is amazing. And right away I went, okay, this is Christian and animation that goes together really well. <laughs> So we did over a couple of years, we did a, over about a year and a half period, we did several of the creation minutes. And then um, he said, Eric, listen, I got to tell you, nobody has jumped on this idea of taking the Bible, taking God's word and actually producing it in, in, a, in a computer environment. Like, for example, creation. The technology is at a place now where instead of just reading in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. You can show in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And my mind was still trying to wrap my brain around that concept. And uh, we ended up pitching it to our board of directors, and we jumped on it. We said, yeah, this is something we'd like to partner with you on. So Creation Today is partnered with Ralph and Sevenfold Films and then another ministry out in California called Resurrection Pictures and then Kingdom Work Studios down in uh, West Palm Beach, Florida. Anyway, God has brought together a great team to produce a film that is going to be spectacular because you're going to get to experience the creation of the world in 3D and you're going to hear from leading scientific experts showing, telling you uh, the truth of the Christian and the creation worldview against, opposed to, juxtaposed with what the evolution worldview that is indoctrinating. Get this, over 50 million students in school right now while we film this are getting indoctrinated with the evolutionary worldview. So we want to correct a lot of that wrong information going out, and the Genesis movie is going to do it in a big way. Think about this. There are over 400,000 churches in America today, and there are 6,000 first-run movie theaters. Where is the impact happening in our culture? Well, the impact, if anybody looks at it, would go, well, the theaters are what are making the impact. They're the ones driving the thinking. It's not the... It's not the books, it's the movies that are making the difference. And yes. so we want to go right there to where the movies, uh, to, to where the difference is being made and, and put our, our lamp on a candlestick, so to speak, on the candlestick of, of theaters and get it out there. So that's the purpose of the Genesis 3D movie. And anybody who goes to GenesisMovie.com and looks at some of the footage, I think you'll be blown away with it. Yeah. Well, that, that uh, thing, uh, you know, the fact that it's a movie and not mm -hmm. a book, you know, nobody hardly reads books mm -hmm. anymore these yeah, days, really. you know, but everybody watches movies. So, you know, it, it's perfect, you know? Yeah, I, I've seen a trailer on Facebook uh -huh. and stuff, and it's looking really good. I just super powerful. Mm -hmm. And even yeah. in Facebook video, it's, the graphics just look really good. Yeah. I can't wait to see it in HD. It's uh, even better than the Wii U. <laughs> <laughs> so, so how close is the film to completion? When, when is it going to be out? We've got a uh, little less than 12 months now to complete the actual movie, and our goal would be to have this movie released before the election next year in 2016. If for some reason the distribution deals don't work out, then we're going to have to move to more along uh, spring of 2017. But we've got a real hard push going right now to get the film completed, so uh, please pray for us on that. There's a lot of work to be done between now and then. So how long is the film going to be in, 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 when it's completed? You know, it's, uh, our goal was to hit 90 minutes. We've got so much content that we're sitting at about, uh, about 110 minutes right now. So we might even have to take out some of this oh, really good stuff and just yeah. save that for like a small group curriculum or mm -hmm. something like that because it's just gold. Uh, but, so it'll be a, a feature-length uh, feature movie. 
And it's amazing, though, this, this rendering that we're doing to get the computers to render these scenes because they're such high quality. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes a computer anywhere from, and these are like massive computers, yeah. anywhere from 8 to 12 hours to render out one frame of the Genesis 3D movie. And in a movie, there are 30 frames per second. Mm -hmm. So it's 8 to 12 hours for one of those frames. There's 30 of those per second. And because this is 3D, We've got to have 30 frames for the right eye and a different 30 frames for the left eye. So you've actually got 60 frames yeah. per second. And the computer render time, I mean, they're just there going at it, you know, yeah. day after day after day, 24-7 rendering. We actually had the, the power company came to us last week and said, we think there's a problem with your meter. We need to check it out. <laughs> you don't just want to disconnect that with all these machines running. So we had to schedule a time, shut it down. Nothing's wrong, but the meter is getting so hot because we just pull mm -hmm. yeah. as much electricity as that thing will let us pull through that uh, that meter. So it's uh, it's pretty crazy. Anyone who doesn't know how hard 3D animation is just needs to try rendering something and they'll yeah. see. Because, <laughs> I mean, you, like in Blender, I, I have a scene done, which mm -hmm. my scenes are not near as good as a 3D movie. The Genesis 3D movie, mm -hmm. they are, uh, you know... They're, they're pretty okay, though. They're mediocre at best. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, like, out of one scene, which is, of course, uh -huh. the new Blender cycles render engine takes quite a bit of time to get yeah. done. And, you know, if I, I'll be, like, rendering a scene. I remember sometimes I would start something rendering, and then I'm like, you know, I think I need to change this. And so it'd be like, you know, take overnight for a one scene to get done sometimes. Yeah. And I just keep changing things. Like, I think I should move that Of course, over. you had a really, really slow computer. Yeah. So that didn't so, help. Yeah, but... I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, get this. These computers, these computers take that amount of time, and we've got over a terabyte of RAM. A terabyte of uh, my computer I'm on right now has, I think, eight or sixteen gigs of RAM. Wow. These things have over a terabyte of RAM, and it just—it's it, amazing what it takes to do it. But we're blessed to be able to to be working on this, and uh, I'm, I'm really excited about it. Yeah, but aside from the Genesis 3D Movie Project and the Crazy Day Show, you guys are also working on what's called the Creation Network. Is that it? Yeah, the Creation Network. So could you tell us a little bit about what that what that's all about? Oh, man, another just huge opportunity for the creation. I'll call it the creation movement. I, I guess I've always felt like the secularists, uh, the, the ones teaching evolution, they have kind of a unified front going forward. And I felt like the creationists were always kind of segmented. And so my desire for a long time has been to serve other creation ministries in a way that allows us to create more of a unified front. And that's really what the Creation Network is all about. It's kind of taken on a life of its own. We started by, uh, by going, hey, instead of only putting the events that I'm speaking at on our website, Let's ask other creation ministries if we can put their events on our website just to help them advertise it. Well, that kind of took off. Now we have over 35 different creation ministries that we're putting their events on our website. So when you go to creationevents.org, you can learn about all the different creation events happening around America. And uh, we're even getting a lot of foreign countries uh, in on this as well. So that's really exciting. So creationevents.org is part of the Creation Network. You can look at all of these at creationnetwork.org. But it also links to another really cool tool. I went to our guys one day and I said, okay, I got a problem. Anytime I got a question I want to ask about Creation Revolution and I want to find out how somebody else has answered it, I've got to go to like five or six different websites and do searches on each different website to get a good answer. I want one search that will search all those websites for me. Well, they came back to me with an incredible tool. We turned it into a website where people can use it publicly instead of just me using it internally, and it's called searchcreation.org. This website searches the top 19 biblical apologetic websites in the world. So if you do a search on carbon dating or dinosaur soft tissue or whatever your question is about the Bible, you know, how do we get, what about the giants, what about any of that stuff, you're going to get a great answer because I'm only searching good, biblical, uh, reliable websites for the answers. And then I went, you know, there's a lot of places around America and around the world that I've been to where they have a museum and they focus on creation. But nobody knows about them. Let's tell everybody about all those people. And so we had started uh, several years ago and then just revamped it and made it part of the Creation Network, a website called visitcreation.org. 
And that website, I mean, if I told you guys, there are more than 60 places around America right now that you can go to and you can find a creation-based tour or museum. You go, you gotta be kidding me. But you go to visit creation and there they are. They're sitting there, whole bunch of places ready to be explored, all with a creation emphasis. So I, I, we still are working on creationspeakers.org and uh, creation partners for volunteers that want to get involved in creation ministry. So that, again, has taken on a whole life of its own, and I'm really excited about the Creation Network. Yeah, and right. what's cool about it is that, you know, the sites actually look really good, you know? Mm -hmm. It's not like, you know, you go to some creation sites and, yeah, they're creation, but they look terrible. But <laughs> you guys' sites look really good. Yeah. And uh, well, thanks for the compliment. If you visit Creation Network, you can actually see that they've got a video on there. And I was watching it earlier and I was like, wait, who are those two nerdy dorks? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate six months ago me. Uh, uh, it was us, by the way, just in case you didn't get that. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, it's kind of funny. We were actually listening to an interview we did with Dave, uh, our first interview we did mm -hmm. with Jake Dobrins, yeah. our buddy over at. Uh, Creationist company, but it was just crazy because I'm listening to them like, dude, man, <laughs> that's really bad. <laughs> uh, I guess I guess we improve a little bit as we yeah. go on. Mm -hmm. Which is great. You slightly. don't notice hardly at all, you know, uh, that you're getting better. You know, we're, we're getting better talking and stuff like going you know, better audio until yeah. you look back at yeah. the first episodes. You know, yeah. and you're like, wow, like I didn't know we made it so far. <laughs> yeah. But it's a lot of fun too. Uh oh. That, David that Smith. Will you still got me? That will never end, by the way. You will always look back and go, oh, I still this <laughs> uh, last year. It's, it's just uh, it's fun to see just to see how far you came, you know? Yeah. So uh, anyway, guys, we better hurry and wrap this up because we actually have another interview today for the Homeschool Nerdcast. Yeah. Um, so anyway, Eric, thanks a lot for coming yeah. on here. Um, I know this is a lot of trouble, especially having to come back after already doing it. I'm going with whatever I got this time. I got two things recording. Yeah. I don't care how terrible they sound. If we got something in them, we're taking them. Yeah. yeah awesome. It means a lot that you came on here. We really appreciate that. Well, thanks for the privilege of, uh, of letting me serve with you guys and for, uh, for helping lead the way for the next generation to make a difference in our culture. We really can't. It's our... Uh, the, the gospel, the scripture never returns void. So don't forget, as uh, your listeners, don't forget, as you go out there and you present an apologetic, make sure your apologetic is leading to the gospel. That is the key. I did a DVD or a download on that recently. Make sure your apologetics heads to the cross and to the empty tomb because nothing else matters if you don't get there. So keep that in mind as you do apologetics. I don't know about you guys, but I really enjoyed that. Eric was really fun to talk to, and we definitely need to have him on again. But in the meantime, be sure to check out the Creation Astronomy Now podcast at www.creationastronomynow.com. We had a great episode this month, so be sure to check it out. You can also listen to the podcast on iTunes and Stitcher. If you use either of those things, be sure to leave us a five-star review as it really helps us out. I'm Vinny Harden for Creation Astronomy Now, and I will see you all next time.